This is Darren from darrenscorner.com. Uh, today we're going to be looking at part five of a five-part video tutorial series on integrating PHP into Tumult Hype projects. Uh, please check out the in the comments below uh, the link to download some of the sample files that we will be working with today. Uh, for part five, we're going to integrate the top ten high score table that we created in part four into a very simple Tumult Hype game. So let's start off by looking at, we have two text files, two files here. Uh, we'll look at score.txt, which is pretty much identical from part two. We've got ten lines here where we have the score, a colon, uh, three letters for the initials, a colon, and then a date, month, date, year, uh, that we have right here. So nothing too, uh, nothing too, Nothing very different there. Um, as with all of these, we have to make sure when we go into Git Info that it's read and write, read and write, read and write, that it's writable so that we can update that. So, nothing too fancy there. Uh, next, let's go on and take a look at a file called scoredisplay.php. Now, this file is going to be, um, it's very similar to the page2.php file that we looked at in part four. Um, so it's it's a PHP file that's expecting three inputs uh, via the get method. So if we look through this, uh, lines one through twenty one is just simple uh, HTML and CSS, nothing nothing strange there. Uh, our PHP section starts here on line twenty three, and I changed the order a little bit. This these three lines here are. Um, go and you again we're expecting the git method for these variables to be delivered to us and the variables are going to be delivered called score one initial one and date one so that's the um, that's kind of the label that they're going to have to have when they're passed into this file and we then rename them new score new initials and new date and we print out what was submitted um, here we open up score.txt in read mode. We read the current 10 values in there to show kind of the old and then to get that information we then display the old table here. Notice we got a little loop going from 0 to uh, 10 here to get the 10 scores that we have. And then right here if new score is greater than dollar scores bracket 9 so if the new score submitted is greater than the last one in the old table we go through this whole process to update the uh, array variables of new score of uh, let me see do, 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 new score new initials new date um, we go in or scores initials dates my bad um, and then we display the table. So here's the new table with the updated score. Again, all this happens only if this is true. And then we, uh, right here, we open up score.txt in write mode, and we go in and write the new values and close the score file. So this is going to be actually called um, the last thing our hype project will do will send out the new scores, initials, and date, and it'll bring it to this page, which is actually outside of the hype file that we have here. But we'll show how those two things uh, kind of integrate easily. So let's look now at part five dot hype. Um, and again, I just made two scenes here. Uh, and I think I'll start by uh, kind of walking through what happens when we preview this in the browser. So. We can change the order that this works, obviously. But um, we have, before you start anything, please enter your initials. So I'll just put in uh, X, Y, Z. And as soon as we put in the third one, we jump to page our second scene. Uh, the initial enters are X, Y, Z. That's stored in a global variable. And then we have this random value that's just changing. We'll, you can look at the code for that. And as soon as I hit stop, it'll stop that. So I stopped it, it hit 9276, again this is purely a game of chance, no skill involved. And then it tells me we will submit the following values. I'm going to submit for the score 9276, for the initials XYZ, that's what I entered on the previous page, and then it went and got today's date from the operating system. So this is going to use the date on the client side. If you wanted to, you could redo the script to use the server side date. I didn't want to. Um, and then I have this submit button. Now let's actually go through this again, um, just to show a couple things. Again, I'll put in um, MNO. Um, you can see this is not visible when the page initially loads. and becomes visible as soon as I click stop. It stops this, displays this information, and then tells me um, that it's ready to submit. As soon as I hit submit, 
this is what happens. Now, again, I don't have this running inside my server environment, so um, so it's not going to do really do too much. But we'll, one thing I want to point out, we'll hit Submit, and we have this uh, an alert, and we'll take a look at that. OK. And this up here. The big thing to see right here is it's calling score display .php, question mark, and it says score 1 is equal to 3377, Initial one is equal to MNO, those are the initials I put in, and the date, oops, sorry about that, um, got to go over there, and the date is 8-3-2016. Um, so let's take a look at how that works inside the hype file. Now if you open up part5.hype, I've actually got five little custom JavaScript uh, things happening here. Some of them are really, really small. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I have initialized scene that runs when this thing loads. I have something that, some JavaScript that runs every time we've clicked on a letter. Um, initializing scene 2, certain things are hidden, certain things, uh, yeah, we hide certain things. Um, also how we can get to the date and things like that. But the big thing of interest is this one, submit score. And this one runs on scene 2 when we click the submit button. So we go there, um, on mouse click, run JavaScript, submit score. So it only has three lines, and we can actually take one of them out. Um, I go and create this temporary string variable, I call it temp1, and I say score display.php question mark score 1 equals, and then I echo window.score. That's going to be whatever when I... Uh, the random number quit running, whatever value that was. Ampersand initial one equals window dot initials. Those are going to be the three letters that we captured. And then ampersand date one window dot date string. Date string again is formatted in that uh, month slash uh, date slash year format. Uh, and then I have an alert that says temp one is set to that. I can actually comment that out later on. And then this is kind of the big thing. This is a, a simple JavaScript command that's pretty pretty powerful. window.location.href equals temp1. And what that does is it forces the current browser window that this is running in, sets the href location to this. So it's going to set it to score display.php. Essentially, when this is running in the same directory that score display.php is in, and also score.txt, it's going to open up score display.php and pass in these three values using the get method. The get is the default method. There's also post. Um, again, you can look at W3Schools to kind of see the details between those two. So um, this works out pretty well. So let's go in. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to say file export to HTML5 folder. Um, get that. That's fine. Export. I'm going to call this part 5 and I'm going to say also save.html file and create and closing folder. on. Let me just change the names here. Okay. So that's done. I'm going to quit hype. And we can see I have this folder part 5 um, and part 5a. I should have thought about my naming conventions here. Um, but I'm just going to grab these two and place them in there. So now inside my folder I have part 5a.html and that runs this. The last thing that this will do when I click on that submit button is it will change window.location.href to score display.php with those three arguments. So again, if I click it right here, again, I can put in my initials, I stop it, and I say submit. There's my a little alert. I can take that out after. And notice what it does right here. It says score display.php and it passes those three variables in. The trouble is it shows it this way because I'm not writing it in an Apache server. So um, I go into right here. There we go. I got XAMP running with my web Apache web server right there. I open up my htdocs directory and I'm just going to drag part 5, it's actually part 5a inside there and then go to my browser and I'll put in localhost slash part 5a there it is and there's part 5a.html so let's see if this works okay please enter your initials 
Um, STU. We let it run. Initials entered are STU. That's good. Random score. Stop. There we go. We will submit the following values. Score 678. Initials STU. Date 8-3-2016. I hit submit. Temp 1 is set to that. Okay. There it is. Bingo. Just like part 4. Here's the old table with the old values. Here's the new table. Notice 6,076 was greater than 1,000. That was the previous high score. STU, there's the date. The score submitted was submitted. Uh, the score submitted was 6,078. Initials were STU. Date submitted was this. So this shows how we can um, integrate this. Again, that last, I'm not going to go into a ton of details on the hype file. Uh, it's just that last command where we use window.href.location. Locate location.href um, that, uh, that's really, really powerful that we have here. So uh, thanks so much for watching this video series. If you come up with any uh, fun um, games based in hype, uh, please send me a link. Um, would love to love to check them out. Um, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please uh, uh, leave some comments and, and like it. Uh, and also please check out darrenscorner.com for more hints and tips on creating games using the Tumult Hype uh, development environment as well as JavaScript. So thanks so much and have a great day. Bye.